Eternal snow covers this sacred mountain in China. An exquisite landscape lies at the foot of the mountain. This place is called Shangri-La. The name conjures up thoughts of some faraway fairyland. The name is steeped in myth. However, there actually exists on Earth a beautiful place that has been named Shangri-La. It lies in a mystical landscape created over eons. The people living here have a reverence for nature, and they look upon the mountain as a source of protection. China's Shangri-La. Join us as we visit this utopia on Earth over the course of a year. The novel Lost Horizon was published in England in 1933. This book gained international recognition. The novel describes the experiences of several Westerners in an imaginary place called Shangri-La, where people dwell in harmony with nature and live to be hundreds of years old. The story was made into a movie, and the name Shangri-La gained widespread recognition. The world was on the brink of World War II, and in the midst of this dark atmosphere, many people were easily enchanted by the story of a make-believe fairyland. This special place was said to be located somewhere in Tibet. Far away, at the very limit of distance, lay range upon range of snow peaks, festooned with glaciers, and floating in appearance upon vast levels of clouds. Several different areas of China wish to take on the name Shangri-La. In 2002, the Chinese government declared that Zhongjiang County lying in the northwest part of Yunnan province was most similar to the mythical land. The county was renamed and the real life Shangri-La was born. This is a highland area. Even at its lowest point, the land here lies at an altitude of more than 6,500 feet. In 2003, the area was declared a World Natural Heritage Site. For the mountain wall continued to drop, nearly perpendicularly, into a cleft that could only have been the result of some cataclysm in the far past. The floor of the valley, hazily distant, welcomed the eye with greenness. Buddhist towers made in the shapes of the sun and moon are found along the path. The predominant faith here is Tibetan Buddhism. Tibetan Buddhism is strongly tied to nature worship and majestic mountains are of special importance. There is one mountain in particular thought to be most beautiful that holds special spiritual importance. We first visited the area surrounding it in February during the winter.
On this day, the temperature is five degrees Fahrenheit. We head off to the sacred area, lying at an altitude of 11,000 feet. When we arrive, we find the area is blanketed in snow. The area surrounding the sacred mountain is cloudy year-round, so the mountain is rarely visible in its entirety. We come upon Tibetan prayer flags called Tarcho. The flags contain sutras written in Tibetan. They also contain prayers for family fortune and other bounties. Even when the mountain is hidden from view, people here face toward it and offer their prayers. One rest area directly faces the mountain. Here we met a photographer named Mr. Zhang Yi. His photos of Shangri-La are said to be the best in all of China. Originally, he worked as a photographer in Shanghai. Four years ago, he first visited the area of Shangri-La and immediately fell in love with the area's beauty. It is the sacred mountain that most attracts him. Sitting in the snow, he waits for a small window of clear sky so he can view the mountain. I've been to mountains all across China, but the instant I saw this one, I knew it was the best. For the first time in my life, I was actually moved to kneel down before something sacred. I waited here once before, hoping for a momentary glimpse of the mountain. And that brief glimpse moved me in a way I cannot describe in words. It was just too amazing. On the fourth night of his wait, the moon finally pokes its way through the clouds. Before dawn, he sets out to get a good view of the rising sun. Just before the sun rises, a strong wind moves the clouds away and gradually everything becomes brighter. The mountain showed again. Gray at first. then silver. Then pink, as the earliest sun rays caught the summit. This is precisely the type of beautiful dawn described in the novel. The mountain, composed of 13 peaks, is called Meili Shui Mountain. One of the peaks, Shun Yu Peak, possesses a special grace. Nearby sits Wu Guan Peak, laid out in the shape of a crown. According to legend, these secondary mountain peaks are family members and followers of the main mountain peak. These majestic peaks are around 19,500 feet tall. The main mountain peak is called Kawagebo in the Tibetan language, a name which means white snowy mountain with a deep canyon.
The peak is 22,100 feet tall. Its Chinese name is Taizu Peak. Climbing this sacred mountain is forbidden, so no human has journeyed to its peak. In Tibetan Buddhism, Kawagebo is thought to be the incarnation of Kawagebo, a god who rides a white horse. He was once a rough, villainous character. However, a Buddhist priest helped him reach enlightenment and become a god. He is now loved as the god of peace and as the god who receives the souls of those who have died. Mr. Zhang Yi says that even if he spent a lifetime photographing the beauty of this mountain, he would not exhaust the subject. Depending upon the winds, the lighting, and even my state of mind, every time I take pictures here, it's different. He's already taken some 20 or 30,000 pictures of these mountains. However, there's a specific type of picture that he has not yet managed to take. His next chance to capture this image will be in the fall, when the skies are clear. He's already begun to search for the best camera angle. Here before the mountain is an area where incense is burned. Many people come here every day to pay their respect to the mountain's deity. Fragrant tree branches are burned as a form of offering. The beauty of Meili Shui Mountain is one of the reasons this place attained the coveted name of Shangri-La. In the novel describing a mythical Shangri-La, there was also a sacred mountain of great importance. Shangri-La was lovely then, touched with the mystery that lies at the core of all loveliness. The air was cold and still. It was so brittle clear against the blue immensity beyond. In bright moonlight, it seemed as if a hand reached high might just touch it. The mountains gleamed around in a hedge of inaccessible purity, 
from which his eyes fell dazzled to the green depths of the valley. The whole picture was incomparable. During the summer, Shangri-La experiences its rainy season. With the rains comes a change in the appearance of the land. This marsh is called Napahai, and it sits at an altitude of 10,800 feet. Its name means lake behind the forest in the Tibetan language. There are some 16 villages located in this area. The people here earn their living by raising livestock. Sanpa is one of the Tibetans who lives off the natural richness of the area. When the rains cease, the marsh has been transformed. huge watery mirror has appeared. Three large rivers flow through Shangri-La here in the Sanjiang Bing Liu region. The Jin Sha River constitutes the upper reaches of the Yangtze River. Waters flowing from the far reaches of the northern Tibet highlands carve a dramatic arc into the land. The curving river is a prominent feature of this area and symbolic of Shangri-La. Land terraces are found near the river. The flat land now used for villages and farming was once river bottom land. The area once experienced a rapid upsurge and shaped the current landscape.
People worship the unique natural landscape here. At the foot of the green mountain lies a white gleaming hill. This sacred land is called Bai Shui Tai. The Nashi tribe living here have long revered this area. The water flowing here is rich in calcium, which it picks up from the mountain's limestone deposits. Through slow accumulation of calcium and repeated upward movement of the earth, this interesting staircase-shaped landscape was formed. It's believed this formation took between 200 and 300,000 years. An altar has been built here, and every day without fail, people come to pray. It is said that Bai Shui Tai drew the Nashi people to this area, and that they began living here over 3,000 years ago. The Nashi tribe called Bai Shui Tai a rice field left behind by a hermit. They have passed from generation to generation a song which praises the area's beauty. The unique topography of Shangri-La was formed by the same tectonic movements that created the Himalayan mountains. It is believed that approximately 70 million years ago, the land mass of India was sitting upon the ocean far from its present day location. The Indian plate, a tectonic plate underlying this land mass, slowly moved northward and ran into the continental land mass approximately 45 million years ago. As a result, the Himalayan mountains were formed. The area surrounding one corner of the Indian plate was greatly changed and a varied topographical region was born. Due to a combination of the tall mountains created here and the low latitude at which the region lies, Shangri-La possesses a varied climate containing both subtropical and frigid zones. Even though the area lies in the south, 
Meili Shui Mountain contains a glacier. This glacier lies farther south than any other glacier found in the northern hemisphere. It provides the villages at the foot of the mountain with a steady supply of water. During the summer months, the people of the village live on pasture land located near the glacier. Medicinal herbs, said to be very effective in promoting health among animals and humans alike, grow abundantly in the area surrounding the pasture land. The local people believe that cows eating these plants in the summer become robust and capable of remaining free of sickness during the winter months. Daily chores here include milking the cows in the morning and again at night and making butter with the fresh milk. The workers sing a special counting song to keep track of how many times they've churned the milk. They churn 700 times slowly and then they are done. The yellowish fatty part of the milk separates and floats to the surface. Ah. Butter made in this way provides the village's greatest source of income. One pound sells for about $1.70. Snowfall can begin here as early as the end of August. Although summers are short, during this time, the mountain shares its abundant riches. Autumn in Shangri-La is magical.
larch and birch trees enliven the valley's hues as they take on their autumn colors. The marsh of Napahai is now dappled red. This plant symbolizes fall here. When it covers the ground, it is time for the harvest. Sanpa has begun to harvest his wheat and all his relatives lend a hand. They were good-humored and mildly inquisitive, courteous and carefree, busy at innumerable jobs, but not in any apparent hurry over them. Altogether, it was one of the pleasantest communities he had ever seen. Around the time the harvest ends, pilgrims begin appearing in Shangri-La. They come here to visit Mei Li Shui Mountain. Pilgrimage is a necessary part of life for Tibetans. People from the villages here also join in. There are several different routes that pilgrims can follow. The shortest route takes five days and the longest two weeks. The pilgrims recite sutras as they walk around the mountain. Sanpa also joins the pilgrimage. They carry over 30 pounds of supplies, including their food and cooking utensils. The added weight makes their journey more challenging.
The people here believe that the more hardship they experience, the more spiritual cleansing they will receive. Many tarcho are hung along the pilgrimage route. The colors represent different elements. Yellow represents the land, blue the sky. Red represents fire, green the river, and white the clouds. Sanpa's family has been on their pilgrimage for three days now. For the first time during this pilgrimage, they catch a glimpse of Kawagebo. As the mountain is often hidden by clouds, it's believed to be extremely good luck to be able to see it during one's pilgrimage. On the fourth day of their pilgrimage, they arrive at the most important part of their route. This sacred area is called Shanpu. It sits at an altitude of about 12,000 feet. Pilgrims walk under the falls three times in a clockwise direction. It is said that when one is hit by the falling water, one receives the God's blessing. People here gain spiritual peace by offering prayers to nature and by entrusting their afterlives to nature as well. The holiday season is in the fall. Tourists and photographers from all over China are drawn to the mountain. During this time of year, the mountain is most beautiful at dusk. 30 minutes after the sun falls behind the mountain, the faint amount of remaining sunlight is reflected by the clouds and the sky takes on a reddish tone. This exquisite panorama of sunset-tinged clouds lasts only for a few minutes.
A unique beauty pervades the landscape at this time of year. The clear sky is filled with a perfect balance of clouds. This fall, there is one picture that Mr. Zhang Yi is anxious to take. Since first visiting Shangri-La, he has taken many, many pictures of the mountain. However, there is one subject he has yet to capture. He has decided that this year will be the year he finally succeeds in putting this subject on film. He begins searching for the right camera angle. In October, he receives word of a good vantage point for the image he's looking for. I've waited for this opportunity for many years. Finally, I hope to capture the image of the mountain reflected on a lake. The mountain reaches a height of over 19,500 feet. In order to take a picture of the mountain reflected in water, the body of water will have to sit at quite a high elevation. He's heard that there's a site that meets his needs, and he sets out with his assistant. They are headed for the village of Soda, located atop a far-off mountain at an altitude of 10,500 feet. Outsiders rarely visit the village. Hearing of Mr. Zhang Yi's arrival, everyone has turned out to greet him. There are 10 households in this small village. Only 66 people live here. However, the village has a long history and is said to have been here on this mountain for over 1,000 years. Every house of the village commands an excellent view of Kawagebo. It is customary for the people of Tibet to wear ceremonial dress when welcoming visitors from far away. The villagers sing and dance at their welcoming party for Mr. Zhang Yi. This traditional Tibetan dance is called the Shinza dance. The dancers wave their long sleeves in rhythm to music from an instrument called a shenza. Mr. Zhang Yi wonders about the lake he is headed to. He keeps his excitement under wraps as a villager leads him to the site. Oh, those leaves are pretty. Unfortunately, when he reaches his destination, he receives an unpleasant surprise. 
Although he had been told he would find a lake here, it turns out to be nothing more than a small pond. To be honest, I'm very disappointed. It didn't rain much at all this year, and I guess the lake lost a lot of its water. This wasn't what he had been looking for. However, he doesn't completely give up hope of getting a good picture, and he begins to look for the right camera angle. At 6 a.m. on the following morning, he's ready and waiting to work. When the sun rises, it will dye the mountain red. That's the picture I want. In his mind, he visualizes the picture he wants. When the morning sun strikes the mountain, the mountain will take on a rose-colored glow for a brief instant. It is this scene that he's waiting for. At 6.30, the sunlight begins to fall upon the mountain peak. For the first time, he sees on the water's surface the upside-down image of the mountain that he has been hoping to photograph. The reflected image is tinged a darker shade of red than the actual mountain. On clear days, the color of an image reflected in water is subtly changed by the interaction of water and light. It is this effect that Mr. Zhang Yi seeks. I was able to take a very good picture of the main peak. Each different viewing point brings with it a new type of photograph. No one else has captured this unique view of the mountain. Another photograph joins this photographer's collection of unusual landscape scenes. Once again, the signs of winter visit Shangri-La. In October, the first snow falls on the mountain. Even cold weather does not stop the incessant flow of people to this sacred land. Believing that the mountain will always protect them, the people of Shangri-La greet the coming of a new season. Over 70 years ago, an English author envisioned a utopia called Shangri-La. We have found an actual place whose landscape and way of life fittingly conform to his description. Life continues peacefully here in this land protected by a sacred mountain.